Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Easy Pass here on YouTube's premium channel about all things women's football. And just like the winter transfer window, the UEFA Women's Champions League group stages have come to an exhilarating close. And in this video, we will be wrapping up some of the key events that went down in this season's group stages and see what it means for the knockout stages of the competition. We begin this analysis with Paris Saint-Germain, who, it's fair to say, weren't given much of a shout to make it out of the group stages, much like the eventual group qualifiers Ajax, but both teams clearly read the script and tore it up instantly, but we will get to that later in the video. PSG right now are of particular interest to me, primarily because of how they were able to respond to the adversity of losing their first two games and being rooted to the bottom of Group C at the early stages of the Champions League. The manner in which they went about turning things around is best shown in their games against Roma in particular, who based on their scintillating football so far both domestically and abroad were expected to steamroll Paris Saint-Germain, who again refused to follow the script. In their two games against one another, PSG had to solve the problem of Roma's fiery and fast non-stop attacking style that was personified through the likes of Greggi, Giuliano and Giacinti. Coach Jocelyn Precia undeniably had his work cut out for him, but the solution he found was resoundingly effective and ingenious as well, as he dictated to his players to implement an aggressive and stiff man-to-man -man press and a tight low block defense whenever Roma had the ball, which in both games was a regular occurrence. This tactic was exceptional in how it effectively stifled the rhythm and flow of Roma, who practically failed in both games to gain enough consistent momentum to play their style of football, and that was due to PSG's relentless aggression, which the Gialarossi ultimately could not find an answer to, despite their best efforts. For PSG, this was a tactical masterclass in nullifying the opposition's strengths and taking advantage with their quick counterattack that were vital in their victories against Roma. With this elite trump card now up his sleeve, Preysha and his players are early dark horses for a semi-final berth because depending on who they meet in the knockout, they will have more than one way of asserting their dominance against the opposition, whether it's through their regular game against a regular opponent or this aggressive defensive approach which, at least in my opinion, does make them an interesting opponent particularly for the next two teams we are now going to talk about. Recent winners Olympic Lyonnais and current holders FC Barcelona are undoubtedly two of the undisputed favourites to go on and potentially win the Champions League, especially after they effortlessly topped their respective groups, albeit with a few unprofessional wobbles during the campaign given the level that both teams operate on at the moment. This is in particular towards Barcelona, who were on the verge of exiting the group stages with a 100% win record till they got outplayed, outmatched, outclassed in their final group game against Benfica, who in all honesty deserved to win that game 10,000%. Despite that though, both Barca and Lyon are going to be a tough opponent for whoever draws them in the knockout stages, but just because they're tough does not mean that they are unconquerable. Putting into account the exploits of PSG against Roma and how Benfica, Slavia Prague and SK Brand rattled the champions, there is a conversation to be had about potential chinks in the armors that can be exploited to potentially cause some systematic shocks to the elite duo. One thing that was noticeable for both teams is the air of complacency that they brought to the lesser opposition. And in all fairness, that is the arrogance and ego of exceptional champions, which does play a part in mentally shaking the foundations of the opponent. And only one needs to see some of the ridiculous scorelines that Barcelona and Lyon put up to see exactly what I'm talking about. But it's that same swagger that they carried themselves with that can be their downfall as well. Not only will the likes of SK Brown have taken notes of what they did correctly to stifle these two teams, but best be guaranteed that the likes of Chelsea who also have been watching how Lyon and Barcelona faltered against comparatively piecemeal opposition. As of now though, it is unclear on whether the fragility shown in the group stages was a result of the teams being figured out or if Barca and Lyon simply were not playing at 100%, because the latter in particular were memorably wasteful in front of all some of their group stage encounters. But really, only time will tell in due course, because the quality of these two sides is such that they can easily shift into a higher gear and unleash some devastating football on their knockout opposition. Now, on the next aspect of the group stages that I wanted to analyze, I simply wrote box office in my notes. 
because there are a few other words or phrases that can exquisitely describe the sheer spectacle that was Group C. Even now in this video, I cannot do justice to the wonder of a show that Bayern Munich, Ajax, Roma and PSG put together over the course of the group stages. Because at some point throughout the entire campaign, each team sat atop the group and had a chance of qualifying all the way up to game week number 6 where not even first place had been determined. Ajax had been written off, Roma were a wild card, and just about everyone was certain that Bayern would be one of the two teams to qualify. But it's fair to say that the turbulent nature of the group ensured us that there would be shockwaves all across the board. I've already touched on PSG's genius in the group against Roma, but a special mention must be made to Ajax who defied all the odds to qualify for the knockouts. The headlines will obviously go towards the usual suspects like the veteran Sheridan Spitzer and the young star Lily Johannes who assuredly deserve their flowers, but marking out just the two of them for praise would be a grave injustice to the collective effort of the team as a whole. Just like the sensationally hype promotional video that they released prior to the start of the group stages, everyone in that IX team understood the assignment because they pulled off a grand heist to get this far after the odds were so insurmountably stacked against them. Given that it is also Coach Suzanne Backer's final season at the helm, there are few better ways to sign off than masterminding a grand money heist that if all goes well, or even goes to plan, could see Ajax pull out some grand scheme that could pay dividends in the form of a spot in the finals. The foundation that Backer has set up at the club will be a good launching pad for a successor to help carry on this exciting team for years to come, because whilst they are dropping jaws in Europe, they still have a ways to go before they can start competing effectively, at least on a domestic level, against FC20 in particular. But the present and future is promising for the Amsterdam outfit, that's for sure. Another shock that came out of Group C was the shock elimination of Bayern Munich, who along with Eintracht Frankfurt, who also failed to qualify, mind you, were the sole representatives of Germany in the Champions League. Now, this is less of an indictment on the league itself because there is elite quality in the front Bundesliga from top to bottom. But maybe, just maybe, it shows that Bayern are yet to really be considered a top continental contender because genuinely speaking, they were arguably the best team in all of Group C pound for pound and even on paper, especially with the performance that they put on throughout the group stages. However, on more than one occasion though, they did admittedly fail to take control of their games or to even finish off their opponents, which ultimately resulted in them getting pegged back on more than one occasion by the likes of Roma and Ajax. Luckily for the Bavarians though, they have their league figured out to such an extent that they can continue dedicating time to figure out how they can finally crack the European formula and put themselves in regular contention against the likes of Barcelona, which will likely happen sooner than later simply because it's Bayern. I mean, come on now. And finally, though I mentioned it before in passing, a special mention and shout out must go to the quote unquote underdogs of the group stages. I raise my proverbial glass to the likes of SK Brown and Benfica, who left in the face of adversity and took the fight to all comers, big and small. Benfica's scintillating draw against Barcelona pays credence to that, and for what these teams lack in collective star power and recognizability, they more than make up for it with the sheer will, tenacity, and drive to push against the weight of underestimation. And I sincerely hope that when the knockouts do eventually come around, at least one of them can pull off a historic upset against a big team, just for the sheer sake of it. Because who honestly doesn't love to cheer for the little guy? It's one of the tenets of football after all. Now with the group stages firmly in the rear view, all that is next is for the draw for the quarter and semi-finals to take place, which incidentally are occurring this coming Tuesday on the 6th of February. And just as a reminder, these are the teams that have qualified for the knockout stages of the UEFA Women's Champions League. From Group A, we have holders Barcelona and Benfica. Group B has previous holders Olympic Lyonnais and SK Bran successfully moving on. Box office Group C is represented by Paris Saint-Germain and Ajax. And finally, Chelsea and BK Hackett round out the representatives of Group D. I purposely read out the names of the teams that qualified first and second so you can fantasize about the potential matchups that we will be seeing come Tuesday. Personally, I'm pining for Ajax and PSG to go up against one of Barcelona, Lyon, Chelsea or Benfica because 
those will be top draw matches, my opinion. What potential matches are you most excited for? And who do you think has what it takes to go all the way and lift the Champions League at the end of the season? Leave your answers in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one.